Welcome back to Adobe Photoshop. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at one of the neural filters inside of Adobe Photoshop. Any of you out there wishing that you could be a very famous painting, but you don't have the skills. Well, Photoshop has made it easy to turn any image like this into an amazing painting by copying the style of master painters. As you can see up here, I've got a whole bunch of different images. This is probably the most complicated one. So I've got this. And when I was looking at these images, I was looking for images where the backgrounds were sort of clean. And this might cause a little bit of an issue, this kind of high key foreground, but we'll see how it works out. We've got a landscape painting. We've got a simple picture of a seagull. We've got this couple and we've got an elephant. And I was trying to keep the texture like this low because this process can muddy up or make this difficult to look at. So we're gonna go ahead and we'll start with this image, which is actually a really good image on its own and probably doesn't need to be turned into a painting. But you know, sometimes as a photographer, you might wanna offer other options to people to sell, or you just wish you could take one of your images and turn it into a painting because you can't paint. We will come up here to filter and we are going to drop down to the neural filters that we see right here and click on this. Now style transfer is right here. You might need to download it if you haven't used it and to get it to work, all you need to do is turn it on. So this is how the program works. There are presets that we see here and then something called custom. Now in custom, we can import our own image and we're gonna go ahead and do that. There are two different ways. We've got artistic styles and image styles. And basically these image styles are gonna translate this style onto this image. And you kind of need to go through and play with them. By default, none of these are downloaded. You'll have to click and download. Or at some point, and I can't remember where, it just says download all images. My guess is over time, they will be adding more images here that work good with the program but we'll just take a look and see what they have here. We're gonna click on this second image because I think it's gonna make more sense. This probably wouldn't translate well. And you can see right here, it's processing that image. Now, right now it's got this weird green halo and stuff going on in this image. Not a big fan of this style on this image. So let's click on the next one and see what it does. Now that's a lot better. Now a lot of these styles have colors built into them that they paint with. And down here on the bottom, you can see we have something called preserve colors. So if you wanna use the color that was original to the image, you can click on that, it will re-render, and then it will apply that color to the image, or you can go with the color that is built in to the style that we're using here. The first thing that we have is the strength. How much of this style do we wanna to apply to this image? And it's just a simple slider. So we'll go about halfway up and see what it does. And you can see it's added more of the style. It's kind of mushed it up and it's making the texture in the background too much. I actually like this at zero, but we'll just move it back a little bit and try 10 and see what happens. All right, still too much. So I think in strength, I'm just gonna leave this on zero. The good thing is you have the ability to slide this around and test different things. The next thing that we have is style opacity. So this is the style, and right now it's 100% of this style. If we wanna blend the original image a little bit, we can lower that, so I'll just do it at 50%. So we're getting like 50% of the style and 50% of the image. So it's sort of a hybrid of both a photograph and a painting. In this case, I don't think it's working. I actually like it much better than the blended image. So next thing that we have is detail. So we have the detail at 100% and we can lower that. And, and that's one of the items that I didn't like. Remember when I saw too much here? Do we wanna simplify and make this a little bit more abstract and lower the detail? This is just gonna be something that's personal preference as far as your image goes. And every time you do this, notice it is re-rendering the image. Background blur. Now, my guess is what it's doing is it's using select subject somehow and it's selecting out the image 
And then when you do background blur, and I'll do a lot so we can see it, it's gonna blur this area out. And the problem with it is it leaves this weird transition right here. So if you are gonna do a background blur, a couple things. I first, I would probably do it in Photoshop as its own layer, just cause it works better like that and you have more control over it so we can get a better blend or just do a little bit of it so we don't get that harsh transition in that area. Next thing that we have is the brightness so we can control the brightness of the image. I don't think this is gonna look good, obviously it doesn't. So I'm just gonna hit Command Z and undo that. We're gonna have saturation, control the saturation in this image. So I can come in here and increase the saturation to give it more color. I'm not a fan of bright colors. So normally I would either leave it where it is or lower the saturation. That's just me. I don't like super saturated colors. And the last thing we have is preserve colors. So we'll go ahead and we'll just click on a couple more images. We'll give this one a try, see what this looks like. So you can see this is quite a bit different, has a different look or feel. Remember, we can always add the preserve color back into the image to see if we like that. We can turn it off. And just like anything, we have control over how this is applied. So let's go ahead and click on image styles. So we'll do a little Van Gogh and see what the Van Gogh looks like. Yeah, that really doesn't look good. Let's go ahead and try, we'll do one of these uh, tattoo looking effects here. Probably not the image to do this tattoo effect on. Actually, it has a pretty interesting effect. I'm not a huge fan of it, but it, it actually turned out pretty good and we could go through and control that stuff. Now, once you're done, we'll assume that this is perfect exactly how we want it. Once again, we have the options to do this on the current layer, which I don't want, as a new layer, uh, with a new layer masked as a smart filter or a new document. Now, I think the smartest way to do this is actually a smart filter. So let's go ahead and just do it as a new layer and we'll, I'll show you why. So we'll go ahead and hit OK. And you can say this is doing it as a new layer. The problem is we can't go back and adjust something if we don't like it. So let's try a different image. So we've got this image of the seagull. And in this case, I'm gonna hit Command or Control J to duplicate it and I'll show you why I think the smart filter option is a good way to go. So we're gonna go down to neural filters and we're gonna turn on style transfer. And then we're gonna pick an image that we think is gonna look good. I don't know what's gonna look good. I'm just gonna click on them to find something that I like. All right, that looks not so bad. Let's try this one. And look, a lot of this is personal preferences to what you like and what you don't like. Go ahead, just come in here and start clicking on the images. There's one or two of these that I simply like a lot and don't like some of the other ones. We'll give this thing a try. I'm not really sure what it is. Now, just like before, remember, we can come in here and adjust this to get it looking exactly how we want to. I'm not gonna waste our time. This is really simple. All you gotta do is do the sliders. Notice it does generate the previews. The faster your computer, the faster this is gonna run through. But in this case, we're gonna change this to Smart Filter, and I'm gonna hit OK. And this is why using that Command J to duplicate this filter is good. If we wanna turn this off, we can turn it off, and we're back to the beginning. But what happens if someone says, I don't like the orange, can we go back to the original color? All you need to do is come over here to the neural filters, double click that, and this will launch it back into style transfer, preserve colors on it, remove that orangish color, go back to the original color, and hit OK. It automatically updates that and changes it. So it makes this somewhat non-destructive where by just creating a new layer, like we did in the couple, it's not non-destructive. It applied it, but we can't go back after we've saved it and change anything. So I think of the two different ways that definitely using the smart filter is the way to go. And you can do this on any type of image. So let's go ahead and just take a look at it on this one. And then I'll show you how to apply a custom image to work with this. So we're gonna go ahead, turn on style transfer. Just like before, we'll click on one of these images. 
in this case, when I do this, I know I want the preserve color because, you know, I, I like that red color. Let's go ahead and try a little bit different of these illustrative. That's not bad. Let's try this one down here. I think it's going to work better for this image. I'm going to try this. And then I think we just might be able to modify it a little bit. So notice we've got strength, style, opacity. What I don't like is the detail. I think we're going to get those brush strokes are a little bit too strong. So let's simplify those. That's not bad. I'm going to just leave the saturation and preserve color and all that stuff there. Remember, I want to output this is a smart filter and then I would just go ahead and hit OK. So we have that image there. And just like before, even though I didn't duplicate this filter, I can come in here and turn this on and off. So for this image, it's going to be a little bit different. We're going to import our own style and then try to apply this to this image and see how it works. So we're going to go up to filter, neural filters. We're going to click on style transfer, but then we're going to slide on over here to custom. I'm going to click custom and then I'm going to import my image. So I've got this thing called test. I'm going to hit use this image and you can see we've got this watercolor Sumai type image and it's reading this image and then it's applying it to this photo. So let's go ahead and we're going to do with the preserve color. All right, so we're getting that blue. And just like we could before, remember we can change the strength. If I want to increase the strength, I can increase that strength and see what that looks like. It's getting a little bit too busy here. So I'm gonna think I'm gonna go ahead and simplify that and take it back down. So I've got the detail at 100%. So we're gonna go ahead and remove that. Simplifying it, I think the detail needs to go back up a little bit. Do a background blur a little, if we wanna try that to see if that blurs the background and makes it look a little bit better. So you can see it's making this pop and stand out. I'm not a huge fan of the blur. My suggestion, if you wanna do a blur, duplicate the background, blur it, and apply a Gaussian blur, and then make a mask and paint it in. I think that's gonna work better. We're not gonna do anything here in the saturation. So this one turned out pretty good. And just like before, remember, if you don't like that, you can go through and try other styles. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe.